Hi everybody, this is Simon Ward from The Triathlon Coach and The Outlaw, as I am your head coach for that event, which takes place on Sunday the 7th of July, which is less than five weeks' time. So, if you haven't already started, you should now be entering what I call the peak and taper period. You may choose to have three more big weeks of training and a two-week taper, or you may choose, if you wish, to have two big weeks and a three-week taper. Uh, I don't think it's crucial which way you do it, um, and I will talk about the taper in more detail in a future video. But for the moment, let's talk about these two big weeks, or three big weeks, and what you should be including. Uh, the number one goal is one final big block of training. We could call this the icing on the cake. The reason I want to think you to think about a cake is that a cake would probably taste nice with or without the icing. And if you've been training hard since December, January time, then even if your final two weeks of big work is interrupted by maybe you've got a little bit of hay fever from the weather at the moment, you know, the pollen, maybe you get a bit of cold, maybe you get some disruption due to work, don't panic too much. You're still going to have 95 to 99% of the fitness that you really need to do the race. So don't worry about, about this too much. However, if you have got a clear run for the next two or three weeks, these are some of the things I want you to be thinking about. The swim, particularly, a big focus is swimming in open water. Focus particularly on skills such as being able to sight. It's a very easy course at the Outlaw. You have to swim clockwise. Um, probably, I don't know, you've got 3.8k. You're probably going to swim sort of 1,800 metres at one side, 200 metres across the lake, 1,800 metres down. So all you've got to do is keep between the buoys and the banking. The buoys are on your right hand side, so you, if you breathe to the left normally, you might find yourself going slightly off course. Practice some right side breathing if you're not used to it. And please do make sure that you get a good try out in your wetsuit. So whilst I advocate pool swimming for conditioning, race skills definitely wants to be in open water at least once a week. Also practice some fast starts and then getting into a cruise pace. Get used to swimming amongst people if you're not used to that. I think you should be swimming long reps. The Ironman swim, or the Outlaw swim, is for you going to be at least an hour of non-stop swimming. If you're used to doing 50s or 100s, you need to add in something that's greater than 400. You need to think about your race pace. Do you know what that means in terms of pace per 100 metres? For example, if you're aiming for a 1 hour 10, then that means 1 minute 50 seconds per 100 metres. Can you continuously rep that? If you were going to do 38 100s, could you do them off two minutes, holding 150? If not, you may need to readjust your goal time. And finally, don't be afraid to keep some high-intensity work in here. You need to keep your fitness levels up. It's not all about long, slow distance stuff. So don't be afraid, one high-intensity interval session per week. On the bike, time to get some long rides in. Weather's great now, nice and sunny. Opportunity to get out there and wear your race kit. I haven't put in a pace here because how fast you go is governed by conditions like the weather and the terrain. So what I'm suggesting is you ride at race effort. If that's 70% of your maximum heart rate, then try to ride at that for a long period of time and see how you feel. Use your race bike. There's absolutely no excuse for having it in the garage now. You should have been riding it well before now, but even the last two weeks, get on it every opportunity. If you're going to ride in the aero position in race day, then do that. If you're not planning to ride on your aero bars and you've got them on your bike, you may as well take them off. But you should certainly be learning how to, to get comfortable in this position for long periods of time because there's plenty of opportunity um, at the outlaw. And also wearing the race kit, if it's a skin suit, get used to that. And again, as with the swimming, keep one high intensity session in there. On the bike, on the turbo or outdoors. Okay. For running, no title there I'm afraid, but fairly self-explanatory. Um, I've put a question mark there next to the long run. If you've done long runs until now, is there any need to do another one? Do you need to remind yourself that you can run that distance? And can you balance that need to run the distance versus the extra fatigue it's going to create and perhaps the way that will get in, in the way of some of your other training? Maybe you should think about running slightly more so that you can keep um, the volume up. So... Uh, shorter duration sessions, maybe a one, one extra one a week. Try to do a lot of running at goal race pace. If you're used to running at 7 minutes per mile and your goal race pace is to run 3.45, 3.50, 3 hours 50, then that's almost 9 minutes per mile. 
that will feel uncomfortable. You need to make it feel comfortable by doing it more regularly. Um, also, get used to running off the bike. Almost every session now you could make off the bike if you wanted, apart from a high intensity session if you intend to do one. But do remember that when you're running hard and you're tired, there's a greater risk of injury. So um, if you get rid of that high intensity session in the run, I don't think it's a problem. Your fitness will be maintained by this high stuff. Um, but you, you may reduce the risk of injury. One final thing, strength and conditioning. A lot of people like to ignore this now and focus on swim, bike and run. I think that's a mistake. You can just do 15 minutes at a time, maybe twice a week, and focus on core and maintenance. Do some movements, do things that involve balance and light weights, but do really focus on maintaining core strength because um, typically at the outlaw half of the weekend we noticed a lot of people that were coming in even after six or seven hours that looked like they were just sinking in the middle because their core was weak. So that's it really. It's very simple. Keep the distance, use your race kit, use your race pace, develop race skills, be consistent and we'll see you at the finish line in about five weeks time. Bye for now.